Hello, welcome to Crush Repeat 2021. We're live. We're so excited to have you all here with us for the sixth Crush Repeat. And we can't wait to show you the beautiful work this group of artists has created. My name is Sarah and I'm one of the organizers of this show. Hi, and I'm McKenna. I'm another one of the organizers of this show. We first just want to acknowledge that the majority of the artists in this show, as well as its organizers, are living on the unceded ancestral land of the Duwamish Coast Salish people. We commit to show up for the repair work necessary to support and honor the past, present, and future of the Duwamish tribe. We've placed a few resources in the comments to help you find out the indigenous history of where you live and to share ideas for redistributing resources. There's a perfectly timed popsicle truck um, in my head. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, we also wanna say Ramadan Mubarak to all who are observing. And I'll share a little bit about this show. Um, Crush Repeat is for a queer community and their friends, but it's open to anyone who wants to try out a daily art practice for the month of March. Some people chose a small project to repeat every day and others worked on a larger project a little bit at a time throughout the month. Usually we have a physical show that stays up um, for weeks with various events and um, workshops, but due to reasons that we are all aware of, this is our second straight year staying in the virtual space. This has been a grueling, heartbreaking year in so many overlapping ways, um, isolation, loss, racial injustice, and an, an ongoing rise in white supremacist movements. And therefore we chose a fitting theme for this year's show. Anything we do is beautiful. Why, why did that suddenly make me want to cry? <laughs> it's it's anything, we, anything we do is beautiful. Anything we do is beautiful. Anything we do is beautiful. This means that some people did work for just part of the month and are totally welcome to show it. Um, and others dared to move in completely new directions for them. This year, our youngest artist is eight and a half and our eldest is in their seventies. And then we have participants from as far away as Kentucky, as well as several from Canada. You'll see the work of both established artists and of people who are trying this for the first time. We love it all and we're so happy to share it with you. It's always, um, Something that I always really enjoy about this show is just being able to see each person's body of work um, that they've made a little bit um, day to day, and then they have a whole body of work to share with us. And then putting those larger bodies together to present this whole show for you. And our intention has always been for this project to not just stop here, but to be a template that we can apply to other parts of our lives. So if we each do a small regular part to fight for liberation, make it a routine, right? A daily routine, um, fighting for liberation, justice and joy for all people. And then we connect in a sustained organized way with other people who are doing that same work. This is how we will change the world together. I second that. That's also my favorite part of the show. Everyone's work is so beautiful. Every year just is always awe inspiring. So here is how things will go for the evening. Each artist will have around two minutes to present their work. Some are here with us to share about their project live and others have chosen to prepare a statement in advance that we will read for them. Artist statements will be posted in the YouTube comments. So keep an eye out um, with their work um, while their work is being shown. Um, many people are selling their work as well, so that information will also be in there with their bio. Tonight, you will only see a few pieces from each artist in this live stream, um, but immediately following this, all of the pr full projects will be made available for long-term viewing, forever viewing, on our website, crushrepeat.com, also linked in the comments. Um, information about how to purchase as well as see more of everybody's work that they've done outside of and around Crush Repeat is also available there. This show is made possible through the generous support of the Office of Arts and Culture and Vermilion Art Gallery and Bar. 
in addition to all the hard work of our wonderful volunteers. Tonight, we have Peter Van Inu running the slideshow. Thank you, Peter. Chloe Huber managing the YouTube chat. Thank you, Chloe. And Maddie Romancic, Kiyomi Gohalo, and Darius X helping us to introduce each project. Thank you all. Um, all right, let's go to our first artist. Alice Dintermanos is a queer Seattleite and amateur scrap artist who cannot leave the house without earrings. Hi everyone, I'm Alice. And this month I um, did another round of earring makings and I like to use found items and some bought, uh, bought items as well. I think some of my favorite things that I used this year were uh, packaging from our ping pong table, um, old jeans and some doll's eyes um, from a from a vintage of fair. And um, I got to learn some new um, skills like knitting uh, metal and um, rekindle some old ones like paper mache. And um, I definitely had many moments where I thought I had a concept and I thought, oh, this is going to be so simple and so easy. And pretty much every time um, it was much more challenging than I thought. So it taught me a really good lesson in um, perseverance and also being OK with things being imperfect, which I think is pretty applicable to this whole year. And um, my earrings are for exchange. So I would love to exchange them for other um, arts and um, crafts that um, you have made. So um, would love to hear from, from you. And I really look forward to seeing everyone's beautiful work uh, tonight. Amy Fiddler is a white, queer, non-binary youth mental health counselor living on Duwamish land, also known as Seattle. Their collages focus on developing color palettes and moods. These collaged cards will be given to UW custodians through the UW Custodian Project, which advocates for greater recognition and protections for the custodians who have worked in person throughout the pandemic to keep space safe and the community healthy. Audrey Ha is a Vietnamese American woman who enjoys walks with friends and every single flower she has ever seen. Hi, um, I'm Audrey and I'm really excited to be in Crush Repeat this year. So I used the month as kind of a healing journey for myself. Um, I picked up a daily journaling, like self care, thing last year when I left um, my fiance and we were in an abusive relationship. And so I used um, my days in March to read each journal entry and then pair it with an image I took that day um, from with my insects eight. I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. I haven't done this before, um, but it was a really great opportunity to just kind of reflect on where I've come from and where I want to go and kind of seeing everything and have a body of work all at once. So thanks for being here. And if any of this speaks to you, I'd love to have you have it in your home. B. Schroeder is a non-binary glass artist, community arts organizer, parent, and nature lover 
living on unceded Sinaiax territory in the BC interior. Hi, uh, my name is Shorter. I'm a glass artist. Um, at the beginning of March, I started actually with a lot of hope. I love spring and was beginning to dare to imagine a post-vaccine summer with my friends and family. And I pinned my project to that. Hope, joy, kinship as the keys to our resilience. And so I headed to my main muses, our non-human relatives. And of course it had to be otters. Um, I tried to think of them and their silly, simple, wonderful lives as a model, reminding us to hold our friends' hands, to play in the water, to glitter in the sun. And you know, at the end of all of this, I feel super grateful for choosing the project I did. Um, March was really, really hard for me. Um, but I kept working on this project, thinking about otters and flowers, and I just really needed to think about those things because it was so damn hard. Um, and the iris is a symbol of hope, and it helped remind me that there are these things to look forward to. There are beach days, drag shows, sleepovers, <laughs> um, friends, puppies, camping trips, you know, all those good things. And it's going to happen. And when it does, I am going to be like an otter. I am going to hug and I am going to play and I'm going to keep hoping because God knows it's still going to be hard. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you so much for letting me be part of Crush Repeat this year. It really helped make it possible for me to make it through. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. Uh, Bernadette Wright is a self-taught queer femme fiber artist. They like to experiment with different fiber modalities and for 2021 Crush Repeat attempted to teach themselves weaving on a hand loom. They were really excited to play with different types of fibers, abstract designs and colors. However, like much of the past pandemic year, this endeavor was much harder than they anticipated and ultimately resulted in one scraggly, almost kind of finished piece and one piece still on the loom. They anticipate recycling these efforts and trying again at a later date when they have more focus, time, ability to watch videos that aren't just Montero, Blue Brackish is a quiet trans person living in the unceded ancestral territory of the Coast Salish peoples. They're 26 years old, but if we analyzed their carbon, we would find that they are timeless. Hi everyone, I'm Blue. I'm living on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish peoples known colonially as uh, Vancouver, BC. Um, at the start of March, I started a 12 week intensive coding boot camp, uh, 12 hour days, five days a week, uh, with overflow and like extra week reading happening on the weekends. So I didn't really have a lot of spare time to work on my project. So I decided to use something that I interact with every day, coffee. <laughs> Some days felt chaotic while others more creative and it felt good to channel some of my creative energy while in the middle of this really stressful uh, course. And um, I use my art as a small escape from my work. Callan Jansen is a queer, non-binary, self-taught artist and paraeducator living in Seattle. Okay, hi everybody. Um, so I've been spending this last year during quarantine um, working a lot on art, really developing my skills. Um, 
And, but I've mostly been focused on drawing. So I took this March as a chance to try something new. My sister had given me some uh, super Sculpey for Christmas. Um, so I decided to, to give that a try um, and do some work with clay for Crush Repeat. Um, so I, yeah, made a few different things as you can see here. Um, I decided I'd, I'd make a, a couple different things in sets, um, just kind of playing with ideas of like nature and um, the human body and uh, relationships and um, how these all interact and how we're all um, you know interdependent with each other. Um, I had a lot of fun with these and uh, I didn't quite get to finish up what I was doing because I got carpal tunnel in my hand at the end of the month uh, due to an unrelated project, um, but kind of ended up working on this little tooth fairy here. Um, and I'm still planishing, on, uh, I'm still uh, planning on finishing it at some point. Um, my wrist has been feeling better, just been trying to rest it and stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun working on these. Um, and it's exciting to be a part of like a community thing because I've mostly been just working on art by myself at home over the last year. So it's it's really fun just to be a part of this with, with everybody and see everybody else's work too. Um, and yeah, I'm not selling any of these, but I, uh, I did just set up an Etsy, but then it got suspended for some reason, selling some prints of like some of my other work. Um, so you check out my Instagram, it's Socks for Hands. Um, and yeah, that, that's all I got to say, I guess. Yeah, uh, great to be here. Thanks, everybody. Carissa Knight lives in Seattle, is into sing-alongs, pointing out dogs and making lists, and usually doesn't know how to answer, how are you, but still ask it of others. Hello, I'm Carissa, and I made a little zine called Trying My Softest. Um, it's about sometimes when I try my hardest, I can beat myself up if I'm disappointed, and what if I was nice to myself instead? Um, I accidentally drew what was intended to be the front cover on the back side. Um, so that was uh, the back that you're looking at. And uh, the last slide there, I think, will be the front. Um, yes, uh, this project started as, ironically, me being hard on myself for being hard on myself. Um, and morphed into me writing to myself like I'm a friend who cares about me. Um, the first slide there was all of the pages very small. Um, there are also a few pages at the end that were kind of just exploring some of the things that working on this brought up for me or things that went into it, like what the image on the cover is about. Um, like about how this practice of prioritizing support over punishment when interacting with myself felt connected to a larger vision of abolition of dehumanizing policing and prisons um, and other miscellaneous things. Uh, it's not all polished, but that felt like kind of the point and it mainly felt like a sweet process of getting to spend some time with myself uh, if there is interest, I might try to make a few copies. So feel, feel free to contact me if you want to buy one. And uh, it'll probably be like whatever you pay uh, is given to a mutual aid network in Seattle. Um, you can find me at Carissa Knipe on Instagram or CarissaKnipe.com. Um, and yeah, thanks, Crush Repeat folks, for doing this. I really appreciated it. Carolyn Shasha is a scientist and artist living in Capitol Hill. She spent the month working on a series of portraits called Unfinished.
Each portrait is of a person who died from COVID-19, sourced from the New York Times COVID obituary series. Each work consists of a pencil portrait plus an abstract watercolor piece combined digitally. Harry Brazel is a Seattle native who started painting in February 2021 as an experiment and has found a ton of joy in discovering expression through art. Harry's materials were mostly acrylic, pastels on paper, and sometimes bourbon on the side. March was a test of patience, perseverance, and perspective. Harry feels she has so many technical skills to learn and looks forward to taking classes. Harry's work is for sale. Meal likes long walks, petting their kitten, and dismantling the patriarchy. They created collages using watercolors and pen. The body of work was a constant battle with limiting beliefs and past rumination. They learn to, tr to trust the process and let go of fear. Cat Meal's work is for sale. Christine Longjay loves both her curly asymmetrical hairstyle and her penchant for uproarious laughter at the simplest delights. When she discovered the Betsy Tacey treasury in a little free library, Christine's project immediately changed course. She's constantly untangling the nets of how oppression separate us so that she can reconnect with herself and the rest of the world. The subversive captions typewritten alongside Lois Lenski's illustrations from a, form a growing collection of things Christine has unlearned, epiphanies she's realized, experiences she's shared, what she wishes to hear as a young person, and her hopes for our collective future. Christine's work is for sale. Cleopatra Cutler is a queer mixed Taiwanese American painter and illustrator from Seattle slash unceded Duwamish land who happily paints anything that enables her to paint for a living, but especially loves making art about her culture's connections with the land. Hi, uh, so my name is Cleopatra and my project is called Transformative. And every day I sat down and listened to a lesson about 
transformative justice or mutual aid on YouTube, um, terms I'd heard around a lot, but didn't really know what they were. And I painted or drew a quick self portrait. Um, if you haven't heard of transformative justice, uh, we live in a punitive justice system. So for example, if someone steals your purse, they get caught and fined, maybe even go to jail. Restorative justice tries to take you back to before the harm was caused. So like they give back the purse and maybe apologize. And transformative justice asks the question, why did they feel the need to steal in the first place? Is there a way we can meet basic needs of folks so they don't even think about causing harm? And there's a lot more to it, but that's kind of the gist. And mutual aid is getting help from your friends and community and giving it. I'm doing that right now today where other support systems might be failing us. Uh, so I painted self-portraits because I wanted to record the way I changed through this learning process. And also I never see mixed Asian folks in art. So I wanted to manifest more representation myself. Uh, that is what I set out to do. And as March unfurled with a rise in violence against my Asian community, the portraits also helped me as a ritual of expression and transformative justice and mutual aid were hopeful lenses to process my thoughts. Um, my art is for sale and you can find my work on Instagram at Cleopatra the Artist or cleopatratheartist.com. Thank you. Oh, it's still going. Danielle Morgan Sharon is a queer filmmaker from Bellingham, currently living in Brooklyn with her spouse and their tiny dog, Kino. Danielle experimented with watercolors to create a greeting card each day, which she mailed to friends and family. She found the daily practice of drawing and painting very soothing. especially after a year that felt so unwieldy, using watercolors was a much needed exercise in letting go of expectations and relinquishing control. Mailing something handmade, unique and tangible was the nearest thing to sending a hug to her loved ones. Darius X and Sarah Brown are neighbors who have been friends for 20 years. Okay, so Darius and I learned recently that ossine birds, which are most of the birds in our region, learn their songs from socializing and mimicking other birds. But sub ossine birds, who are mostly jungle birds, are just born knowing their song in their heart. And over a socially distanced fire on my back porch in February, Darius and I were talking about how we have had to be more like sub ossine birds this year. Um, with all of the social isolation, we've all had to find out more of what we're made of and draw on our deepest reserves individually. And so we decided to collaborate and explore this idea in an art project. Um, it's a video, that's why you're not seeing anything yet. And um, so, okay, I would reach out every day and have a different person copy a sub assign bird call with a strict rule to just give it your all and the first take is final. So sometimes it was a third grader that I was teaching remotely. I'm a teacher. Um, one day it was my mom, watch for speckled mour mourner, she nails it. And another day my next door neighbor. So then I would send only those human bird calls in the name of the bird to Darius. Um, and most of these names were new to me and so I picked the ones that I thought that Darius would have the most fun with, whether those were the scientific names or the English name. 
And then what did you do with those, Darius? <laughs> Thank you for asking, Sarah. <laughs> um, so, so, um, so I decided to do a joint effort because I wasn't quite sure I was going to participate this year. So I did put together a combined effort um, into one project. So heads up, our vid video is just a little bit longer um, than usual just for us. But um, once I heard Sarah's idea, I could not resist <laughs> the challenge to illustrate each bird without doing the research, no Googling, no looking ahead in our shared folders. Um, I wanted to keep it super simple and sustainable. Um, so I gave myself uh, simple guidelines. Don't overthink this, just do it on my iPad, one brush, max, maybe two for some outline and colors um, and 10 minutes per bird. Well, yeah, right, <laughs> it didn't quite turn out that way. Um, another fun challenge I will say about uh, putting this project together was condensing all of the audio recordings uh, because honestly my favorite part of this whole project was first remembering what it felt like to experience spontaneous joy with a person like in real life um, and then getting to hear other people do the exact same thing. So I really encourage everyone to check out the extended director's cut um, <laughs> which is on the Crush Repeat website alongside all the work from tonight's artists. Um, and I also have prints and stickers of my images for sale. Um, and without further ado, I hope you find as much joy in this project as we did. Please enjoy the video. Oven bird. Teacher, 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 teacher. Dusky capped flycatcher. Speckle-breasted Aunt Pitta. <laughs> Snow-capped mannequin. <laughs> Yellow cheeked Picard. <laughs> oh boy. Sharp Bell. Here we have the white browed purple tuff. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I have no idea Just how to make that noise. Just really be a bird. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 Bird 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 Whiskered Myobius. <laughs> Speckled Mourner. <laughs> Ochre Rumped Ant Bird. <laughs> Me Me Agitated Fire Eye. Western Wood Peewee. <laughs> Greenish Shifferness. Pew, pew. Black Bush Bird. <laughs> Varied Honey Eater. <laughs> Mask Kitty Raw. <laughs> Pink 
White bearded mannequin. <laughs> Tyrant fly catcher. <laughs> Wood creeper. <laughs> the beardless tyranulet. Long-tailed widow bird. <laughs> Slatty bristle front. <laughs> Cock of the rock. <laughs> Mustachioed Darius. <laughs> Sarah Brownbird. Isla is a facilitator, organizer, and artist working to heal sy systemic and interpersonal violence at the root. That was too cute. And I feel like um, that intro made me sound more serious than I am. And um, <laughs> <laughs> like that sounded really serious. Um, I spent the month making portraits of trans women and femmes who I admire across space and time, some of whom are still here, some of whom are not. Um, and as I got into it, I realized how intimate and vulnerable portraiture is. This was kind of like my first deep dive um, and I got to make some portraits of people I really love. Um, and yeah, I um, worked on these every day. I didn't have a finished product every day. Um, yeah. And these are lino cut portraits. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Emily Stern is an artist, writer, mama, and teacher living with her cats, daughter, and badass roommate in Santa Fe, New Mexico. For this year's Crush Repeat, Emily was inspired by prayer and reflection to make pieces that allow for a daily ritual of presence. Emily saw the connection to the earth and to ancestors through her playful incorporation of found, salvaged, and reimagined objects. These pieces tell a story of a being embedded in the messiness of daily life, seeking a pattern, a connection, an aspiration to what came before. Emily's work is for sale. Emmett Stanfield is a writer, queer, trans, Jew, living on Duwamish land, Seattle, who spend their weekdays as a nanny and therapist and their weekends having as much fun as possible, all the while taking lots of photos. Hello, so for this year's Crush Repeat, I decided to um, make my project as accessible to me as possible because I was finding it hard to focus much on any one project, but I take pictures every single day. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll do a photo a day project. So I just, I tried to capture um, some of the really like sweet and silly and sad and hard moments of each day um, and picked a photo a day. And as you saw, a lot of them are from um, 
my days nannying and I nanny these two toddlers who are just the cutest and every day fall more in love with each other and I get to witness it. And so those are some of the photos. And then I also have photos of friends and of places that I've gone and, you know, ice cream <laughs> and my office and <laughs> Zoom calls, <laughs> just little bits of each day. Erica Everidge is an artist based in Santa Monica, California, who works in a variety of mediums, including painting, drawing, and sculpture, and will be pursuing an MFA in fine arts at Otis, Otis College of Art and Design this fall. Hi. Um, okay, so for my project, I chose to do what I called zooming around the world in 31 days. And the idea was to capitalize on a discovery that um, brought me a lot of joy throughout the quarantine or throughout stay at home time, um, which was life drawing on Zoom. And so for the month of, month of March, as we kind of wrote out some of the final months of, final month of isolation, um, I thought it'd be fun to meet and draw and paint strangers, strangers around the world. Um, so some of these models were in Brazil, Canary Islands, not all were professional models. Um, and they all, it was really beautiful to see people just be vulnerable and present themselves and their naked bodies on Zoom for sometimes hundreds of people in the Zoom room. Um, and I chose to work small so that I could complete painting every day and um, another fun thing was that, I don't know if any of these photos show it, but I chose to work on cardboard toward the end on um, cardboard boxes because I thought why buy toned paper and board when I'm being delivered a lot of my goods in these cardboard boxes because of quarantine. Um, so I started painting on those by the end, which was fun. Um, and all my work is for sale. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to add. Um, oh, I guess you can see in these paintings that a perk of life drawing on Zoom is the forced extreme perspective and foreshortening that can happen. As you can see in some of the pink, the pink male on blue background. So that was a fun, fun discovery. Um, yeah, I'm Erica Everidge Art on Instagram and you can DM me and whatever. Thanks so much. And thank you to Crush Repeat for the accountability um, to show up for yourself every day and paint, which is you know, sometimes hard to prioritize above all the other stuff we have to do. So thank you. Erin Lynn Forrest is an artist, herbalist, and harm reductionist living on unceded Pomo land in Sonoma, Sonoma County, California. Um, this March, she made spells with leaves from Umbilaria Californica, the Bay Laurel, um, endemic to the Western Oops. <laughs> Endemic to the Western coast, the bay is a volatile fuel for fire and also has the ability to withstand and regrow from it. These leaves are markers of home and for Aaron are emblematic of safety and uncertainty, grief, hope and resilience. Aaron's work is for sale. Aaron Gilbert is an artist writer and translator who lives and works in Seattle. Throughout the month, she created quick sketches of friends and loved ones as part of an ongoing project exploring intimacy, ephemerality, and memory.
Haley Freeland is a musician, curator, and tour manager based in South Seattle. Uh, hello. Hi. Um, so I decided to uh, write a poem every day for each day in the month of March um, and make each poem 31 words long for the 31 days. Uh, with an end goal to be better at creative writing um, because I've been pushing myself to do more songwriting. Um, this is my first public poetry and this is my first time making like really queer centric work. Um, I tried to write poems about my experience as a queer person navigating past and present relationships and situations in my life. Um, and I also tried to write them in an ungendered way, both for myself and for those who read them. Um, my personal experience as a queer person is that I often don't feel queer enough, but this process has helped me feel empowered as a queer femme and artist. Um, I was hoping to have them more for sale than they are right now, um, but I'm hoping to scan the poems and compile them into a zine. Um, and when they are available, um, I'll post all of that to my, uh, my website and my Instagram. Instagram is probably the best way to keep updated on that and any of my other work. Um, and it's just my name, one word, Haley Friedland. Um, but it was really, really fun to take part in this and um, really just so stoked that like this exists as an entity. Um, Pressure Food has been so awesome. The community is amazing. And I'm really glad that I got to take part and can't wait to get in on it again next year. So thank you so much to the organizers and the sponsors um, because this has just been an unreal and totally positive experience. Haley, are you gonna read your poems for us? Oh, um, I could, I could read one. Um, gosh, I have to find my notebook though and I don't wanna hold things up. <laughs> They're right there on the screen. Oh, okay, sure. I could, I could read the ones on the screen. Um, okay. 400 days ago, in a small room in Philadelphia, I woke up, stretched my limbs, and rolled over to greet you in the blinding winter sun in one unified salutation. Uh, day 15. My big sky baby sits on the hood of my car, perfectly at home in the middle of nowhere, incomprehensible and all-consuming, like a rococo cloud among the rust dust. Day 30, uh, you are an artifact laid to rest in the clay earth of my body. I am the archeologist eager to excavate. I am also the burial ground warning of a curse. Hannah Chapin is a queer teacher and scientist who loves walking around the Pacific Northwest. Um, hi. I usually use pen and watercolor to explore my world using very representational sketches, which become a record of my experiences, um, almost like a visual journal. So last year for Crest Repeat, I sketched buildings, which were very solid and defined subjects. So for this year, I went the opposite direction. I did only abstract art. I avoided precision. I tried to embrace chaos. I made pens out of branches. I used word-like scrawl um, as artistic elements followed where materials led me rather than aiming for a vision. And I was looking more inward for inspiration. I discovered some creative joy and senses of fun and serendipity that I don't access as easily through sketching. The openness of the abstract goal was both freeing and frustrating, um, but the final products make me smile. So I hope to keep elements of this creative chaos in my art practice moving forward. My art is for exchange or for sale with uh, proceeds going to nonprofits. As always, it was a rewarding way to spend the month and uh, a delightfully freeing opportunity to engage with creativity during the springtime, which is especially motivating. Darius, you're muted. 
let's start over again. Thank you. Uh, Janet Nahama Miller and Wiley Blue Villarreal, age eight and a half, are a parent kid artist team who like to combine their creative superpowers into weird, fun projects. What will happen? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing everyone who came before us. I am so inspired. All your work is so beautiful. Um, for me, this project is really about doing, just having fun and being playful with art because I'm often really concerned with the, how it looks and what the outcome is. So Wiley and I put our skills together and he put, uh, he made these really cool Lego builds, little figures, and I painted worlds for them. And yeah, we just created fun, creative new worlds together. Oh. And it reminds me that art can be anything you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not an artist, but it's like art isn't only drawing and painting the things a lot of people think of first. Lego is art. Minecraft can be art. It's creative and you're making worlds. So we get to um, make our own new kinds of art. Do you want to add anything? No. You sure? What will happen next? What will happen next? <laughs> Thank you, Crush Repeat team. Jess George lives in Kentucky and spends 11 months out of the year looking forward to Crush Repeat. Since this year has been spent using a lot of digital communication, Jess decided to learn how to make stickers and gifts that she could use on text messages to friends and other loved ones. With the help of a Skillshare class, she created the stickers using Adobe Illustrator, After Effects, and Photoshop. They are uploaded to her Giphy profile and can be used in text messages and social media through that platform. Check them out in the address in the comments. Kaden Kai is a mixed race, non-binary installation artist who daydreams wildly on Duwamish land called North Seattle. Kaden, are you here? Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I purposefully didn't lock myself into very many specific goals, uh, which was counter to my regular way of being. I ended up focusing on installations using natural materials that illustrate entities and instruments of protection that live within me, whether they are helpful or not. So this is a, a big altar. Those are four by fours that used to construct a bed within my house and I built an altar with lots of deathy bones. Could we go back a slide to the nest? Okay, so I've been curating a house for myself this whole past year. So this symbolizes that journey of literally nesting, uh, weaving elements of my life together in a protective cozy way, just like I wove these branches together over the month. Uh, they were sourced from a newly trimmed fig tree in a local green space here on the land of the Duwamish. My apologies to the Parks Department. Uh, and then could we move again to, yay. So this is a heart, which it looks spiky, like I'm trying to keep you away, but each of those are tipped with little barbs. So if you get too close, it ensnares you and clings to you. And then if you try to move away again, they stick to your sweater and end up ripping the seed pod open. So really everybody wins. And then there's one more, please. Yeah, this is called Sentinels, um, which for me represents 
hypervigilance. I made these out of ponderosa pine cones in Spokane, Washington. Uh, nobody needs this many lookouts on the job all the time. Every day is not a war, but many of us have this underground stress response. And um, uncovering this and putting it to light feels like anti-capitalism for me. Um, these are not for sale. Obviously, they live where they were built, but if you want a custom installation, I'm happy to talk about that. I'm so grateful for this community, for all the participants and all the organizers. Thank you. Uh, Kat Behrend is a queer white Latinx Jew who lives in Seattle, teaches kids to read, and loves to make stuff. Hi everyone, um, my project is a collection of still life drawings of objects that I found um, literally on my kitchen table or on a shelf nearby. Um, I used Pentel markers that my friend Nicole sent me, you're going to see her art very shortly here, um, and some origami paper that I found in my partner's craft area. <laughs> uh, I chose to do these drawings really because I wanted, um, I wanted to do something that I knew I could complete. So right now as a parent and a teacher, I'm just like constantly exhausted and feel like I have no time. So March was like particularly just hard and a dark, a dark month. So I, I felt like being limited by the size of the paper and using only objects that I could easily find um, really made this project feasible for me. And I found that drawing an object quickly, so in less than 10 minutes, I had to really let go of my perfectionist tendencies and just go with the lines and the shapes that I first saw. I also tried some different uh, fonts or lettering. I'm really interested in hand lettering, but I haven't really learned any techniques yet. Um, and through this year's Crush Repeat project, I just reconnected with my love of drawing, the simplicity of the materials, um, and I know it's kind of cheesy, but just kind of like seeing, drawing the household objects helped me see things, uh, you know, in like a, kind of a new light, like the things that I see every day, looking at their uh, colors and their textures. Yeah, um, it was really fun. And I'm really uh, happy to be here with all these incredible artists tonight. So uh, my work is uh, for sale or for free or for trade um, and any profits go to mutual aid. Kelly Cavanaugh is a visual artist who loves donuts, taking a nap, and has now spent over a year in the constant company of their dog, Buxton. Cavanaugh's project entitled 31 Two Minute Sketches of Buxton includes 31 digital portraits of the artist's dog, Buxton, generally drawn in two to five minutes. By completing each daily sketch at different times of day, Cavanaugh attempted to ca capture the varied moods and attitudes of their subject. Kiyomi Gohalo is a trans queer person who sews a lot to find enjoyment in life. Hi. Um, so this month I challenged myself to sew one garment a week. Um, so I made a pant, I made pants, a slip, a dress, and a coat um, for each week. Uh, during the pandemic, I have had to cut out a lot of spending, so I focused on patterns and fabric that I already had owned. Um, the fabric I used and the patterns that I chose to sew uh, directly reflect a life dedicated to comfort and function, um, as well as adaptable to a body in flux. 
the process of sewing, though frustrating and repetitive, uh, I also found to be very meditative and very rewarding. Um, I spent the month reconnecting with my craft and with myself. And so I just sewed a bunch of garments for myself and it was a nice way to reconnect uh, with a craft that I really enjoy doing and also get through a isolating and hard month. And they're wearing them right now. And I'm wearing them now. <laughs> Crystal Correa is a queer, fat femme of color and facilitator of brave, transformative spaces whose greatest joy in life is laying in the sun next to a body of water with, their pe with her people. Yeah, hi. Um, very excited to be here. It was the first time I've ever done anything like this um, for this project. I um, took a, pra a daily practice that I have in which I dance or move my body for three minutes or more every day and then made a montage of that. i um, very grateful to the music makers whose music I uh, took or listened to while I was doing this and to the Crush Repeat folks for um, helping me with wild technical difficulties. Um, this is a really cool way to um, be rooted back into my body and to um, explore flow and um, experiment with being seen. So thanks. Kylina M. Wrench is a Pacific Northwest born artist with a deep appreciation and love of nature. Working as a habitat and trail restoration worker, they have made opportunities, they have many opportunities to observe and interact with their environment. Hey, so uh, hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I have spent uh, a lot of time outside since uh, October when I started working out there. Um, and a lot of times we have kind of long drives to the job site because we work around the state doing a uh, habitat restoration and conservation work, um, mostly invasive species control. Uh, but I have a lot of opportunity to see the, the changing of the sky and uh, you know, work starts pretty early and I get home as, as the day is winding down. So uh, thankfully get a little bit more daylight nowadays, I'm excited for the summer, but uh, 
yeah, a lot of beautiful sunrises. Uh, so I just kind of spent the month contemplating the sky for a while and uh, taking some time to be meditative and just uh, appreciating some color in nature. Uh, I used a, a lot of wet on wet technique also. <laughs> L.M. Zoller is a Seattle-based bisexual non-binary writer and baker who explores the intersection of gender and food through zines, food blogging, and cake design. Hello. I should also say, too, that I'm a white Midwesterner uh, who's been on Duwamish land for about seven years now. Um, so my collection for Crush Repeat is an extension of my work as a queer food writer and baker. Uh, for the last two years, I've been working on a series of cakes, um, like actual physical cakes that you can eat uh, that are satirical gender reveals. And if you don't know what a gender reveal cake is, it must be nice to <laughs> not know that. Uh, essentially what it is, is when you have a pregnancy, a doctor can use an ultrasound to determine what the fetus's apparent genitalia may be. And then if the parents are so inclined, that information can be secreted from them, not for fun trans means, but rather to give to someone to make a cake or fill a box with balloons, uh, blue for penis or pink for vulva. And as a trans person and a non-binary person, I find this incredibly problematic, creepy, um, chromosomes and genitalia do not determine gender. So it's really a crock. Um, so I have some curse words that I wanna say about that, but I'm not going to, cause I don't want this to get like problems on YouTube. But uh, so what I did for this series was I wasn't able to make these cakes. Um, I did one called 47,000 acre wildfire in the past, which was a reference to the person who blew up uh, something in Arizona and then caught an entire forest on fire. Uh, so I did that in cake form. Um, but since we can't meet in person anymore, I decided to do mock-ups as art um, in collage form because that's what I'm most comfortable with. So um, some of the ones that I have on screen are based on actual gender reveal fails like the black balloon one, which I think is the first one where the parents were trying to hit a balloon that would pop open to let us discover what this child's junk apparently looks like at 20 weeks or whatever. Um, and it flies over the fence and escapes. And the dad like almost brains himself on the fence going after it. And it just brought me like a lot of trans joy. Um, so you can see like the little fondant figures are crawling up the cake trying to get at the balloon, which they'll never get because you cannot perceive this child's gender. Um, and then I made some that were just sort of like abstract or Dadaist. Uh, the alligator one, I regret to inform you, is a real thing. Um, <laughs> don't throw alligators. Don't um, put alligators. Uh, what am I trying to say? Watermelons in alligators' mouths. Um, but the last one I have on there is based on the Untitled Goose game, where you are a, a video game. You're a goose that does shenanigans. Um, and one time I was at Stanley Park and a goose popped out of a tree trunk and scared the bejesus out of me. So I thought if the goose crashed the gender reveal party that maybe all would be well. Um, so I'm not, I don't have these for sale. I'll be collecting them into a zine most likely. And um, you can follow me on social media and get more information about my other zines. Uh, my handle is I'll make it myself, which is also the name of my super queer uh, food blog because that's still a thing apparently. So thank you all for, for this. It's lovely to be here. Layla Sweetan is a arborist and educator fueled by the awe of the natural world and the love of some humans. Layla sketched some of her favorite trees for 15 to 30 minutes each evening and started to remember how to draw after many years away. Her 
Her favorite discoveries were the joy of committing the strokes with a brush pen and how to transform her drawings with shading and depth by wet finger smearing and the permanent ink before it dried. Lauren Dawson has been in Seattle for a handful of years and, an, and is an avid consumer and creator of art. And so they greatly enjoyed participating in this project. Lauren's project is a series of daily traditional ink illustrations depicting figures being surrounded and comforted by large blooms. They found it relaxing to imagine basking in the comfort of these large blooms in such uncertain times, and they hope anyone who sees their work can also indulge in the idea of it. Leah Wool Pollock is a mixed media artist whose work explores primordial fears and the questions that lie at the root of anxiety. She spent the month working with a process that combines printmaking and collage. Though she had intended to use Crush Repeat to explore her experiences as an invisibly disabled person during the pandemic, the process quickly led led her to abandon her plans for a more visceral exploration of the themes of personal growth, humor, rage, and uncertainty. Leah's work is for sale. Lucas Anderson is an interdisciplinary visual artist from Seattle, exploring fragility, vulnerability, and safety in the context of technology, masculinity, and the environment. Hi, everybody, and thank you. Um, I don't think it can be stressed enough how special it is to have the support of a community during this time and to experience the power of collective creative art at this scale. So. Thank you so much to everyone who's been on this journey with me. Um, I took Polaroids as a daily practice and then used them to create a series of self portraits um, through the month of March. Um, this turned out to be a pretty personal project. Uh, there's a lot of me on here, um, but I explored the idea of consume, concealment and our experience with its dualities. Uh, one side being hiding oneself um, as a form of necessary protection in unsafe spaces or relationships. The other side, of course, is concealment by way of active suppression and subjugation of the non-white, non-Western, non-normative gaze. Um, as a white cis man, I often sit on both sides, benefiting from the privilege of being able to disappear, uh, while also working to understand and unlearn the ableist masculine gaze that um, I experienced. So ultimately, this project ended up being about the embodied experience of concealment, um, existing in that space between uh, what we hide from ourselves and what we show to others, and the physical exhaustion from that constant contortion and performance. Uh, so that was a lot, but turns out when you do something Every day for a month, it can haunt your dreams and take over your every thought. So thank you so much for your presence and attention. And again, for all the amazing work in the last month. 
uh, by the artists, creators, and organizers who made this project happen. It was so lovely to, to do and participate with y'all. So thank you. Luna Picone Loro is a 12 year old artist who likes to paint, draw, and bake. This is a series of little landscapes. Some were inspired by pictures Luna took and others inspired by Luna's imagination. Mackenzie Liu is a fourth gen, 24 year old Asian American wannabe heartbreaker and Zoom partier who likes to draw, shrinky dink, and scheme. Originally started as a comic meant to appreciate mornings, with spring's arrival, she has instead been thinking about gardens and the magic of worms. As her dad tries to rescue as many worms off the road as he can, she played with the idea of anthropomorphizing them, but decided that would be just inappropriate to their nature. Instead, she imagines all that the worms can accomplish on their very own, which is both terrestrial and extraterrestrial adventure. Mackenzie's work is for sale. Maddie Mo Romancic is a lifelong Seattle resident who spends her time making big, messy art projects, working for a library, teaching math to kids, hanging out with friends and family, mostly via Zoom these days, petting cats, consuming delicious foods, mostly while in the constant state of overwhelm and varying levels of anxiety. So this year, um... My project involved the yellow street bumps, which thanks to a coworker I found out are actually called bots dots. Um, I, <laughs> I'm a lover of trash and discarded items. Uh, and, <laughs> and so I, these are like very old to-do lists and I had bus transfers and other like sort of things that might be considered trash, which I, uh, and, and some other things that are just regular art supplies, which I um, decoupaged onto the um, bots dots. <laughs> A whole bunch of them were knocked loose after the snowstorms in February. So I like went out and just collected a huge bag of them. McKenna O'Keefe is a queer femme Jewish artist and designer living and working in unceded Duwamish territory, which is otherwise known as Seattle. Hi. Um, so uh, my project is called Mundane Magic. Um, one of the things that has helped me stay afloat this past year has been um, just trying to like pay close and loving attention to like the tiny little mundane moments in the day that like feel good. And then just like giving them extra love and care and like time to like move into my body and 
and feel. And so I just decided to focus on that because I had a million other ideas that were really hard and very demanding and which I love to do to myself. But I was just like, I'm just going to draw. I love to draw. I haven't drawn in a really long time because I was working in a job that was really hard on my body and I had um, chronic tendonitis. So I haven't been able to draw for years. So it felt really, really good to be able to draw again. And so, yeah, I just found something that felt good every day and I just drew it and I drew all of them um, starting like at, if you look back at the, the cover, which we don't have to switch to right now, they go in like a monochromatic, like each piece is monochromatic, but like all together, they kind of make like a soft hued rainbow. And I was just like, I'm used to only drawing in black and white. And so I was like, I'm going to do that, but do it in color ish, even though it's all still one color. Um, so I challenge myself to like, at least do color, um, which I'm really excited about the only piece, which you can see on the website that is not fully mono monochromatic was the day that I actually saw the end of a rainbow. And I felt like the rainbow itself needed I had never seen the actual end of a rainbow and it was like dying into the sound and it was so beautiful. And so I let the rainbow still be its own rainbow. So that's the only one that has more than one color. Um, and uh, I think I might make prints of these. So they are potentially for sale if you're interested. Um, you can see all of them on our website, um, which all the links for all of that is in the, in the, whatchamacallit, the chat. Thank you. Molly Kaftan Tollefson is a Jewish American improviser, collager, and novice tarot reader living in Seattle, Washington. Molly is crafting her own tarot deck with family photos, found collage materials, a lot of glue, and a white gel pen. The four suits will be tears, which would traditionally be cups, hands as pentacles, breaths as swords and heartbeats as wands or rods. She is far from completing the 78 card deck, but is honored to unveil the first six cards. Prints are available for any card at $10 a piece. Moose is a non-binary artist currently settling into their home in the north northeastmost corner of Washington state always eager to explore within and without, both digitally and by hand. To take a break from the digital art Moose does for work, they decided to create a sketchbook of materials found around the house and fill it with daily inspiration simply made from immediate, I'm sorry, fill it with daily inspiration simply from immediate surroundings or moosings from within. Sometimes it took work for them to not make something for the day, even if they were exhausted or just running out of hours. This became a learning process of letting go and embracing one's limitations. Then someone unexpectedly in the last week of March, Moose and their family had found a place of their own. The whirlwind of moving began and art making went by the wayside for the most part but they are left with a lovely sketchbook yet to fill with more drawings, collages, and musings, musings inspired by their new home. Neve is a densely populated forested haven for actual fairies. Hi, everyone. 
Um, I'm really excited to be here. I want to shout out that this patch that I'm wearing on my dress is a piece of art by my friend Ben Passmore, who's an amazing comic artist. And it says, all cats are beautiful, but it's a cat playing with a cop car. Speaking of cats, this piece is based on the uh, traditional Japanese fairy tale, the boy who drew cats, but I drew it as the girl who drew cats. Um, and in all of the pieces that I made, I was exploring the idea of containers that we could use to travel through space and time that are basically like loving boundaries. Um, those are demons cavorting with one another. I was looking at a lot of like medieval art about witches uh, cavorting with demons. So I really like the verb cavorting for this. <laughs> I used um, a lot of different kind of markers, including watercolor markers that I got delivered to me from Michael's um, and some pen um, and line drawing with those and with regular ballpoint pens as well. And they're for sale. 20 to $60 sliding scale, you can hit me up. There are 29 drawings, I think. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. That's a fairy tale picture. That's like a water horse, if you've heard of those, coming out of that lake right there. And those are hearts, sacrificed hearts on the stumps. Thank you. Nicole Hampton is an elementary school teacher living in Portland, Oregon, who enjoys creating knits, quilts, gardens, collages, and other beautiful things in what little free time she has. Hi. I am, am new to this, and I feel very excited to be here and be a part of it this year. Um, I just was um, inspired by having a little bit of time every day to commit to making art, which is something I don't normally get to do. Um, I was really inspired or the, the collages were inspired by what a lot of people have already talked about, um, a winter that felt very isolating and even in March feeling like we were still in that really isolating winter, like it was never going to end. And um, the collages I created were often inspired by discussions I was having with friends or um, literature I was reading or music. And sometimes I had no inspiration. So I just looked at the paper in front of me, the paper or the shape or the pattern and um, just made a collage from that. So, um, for me, the process was really exciting and kind of reinvigorated me. And I think for me, sometimes I would have an idea of what I wanted to do. And um, often the collage didn't look anything like what I thought it would at the beginning. And so that process of the collage evolving through the like 30 minutes or hour I spent every day um, was really exciting for me and something that I loved. So I was really, um, it just brought a lot of joy to my life to participate in this and really to participate in this uh, little video right now. I'm loving it. So thank you. Peter Van Eno is a master's student and IT nerd from Seattle who loves bunnies and cycling around the Puget Sound. Hello. Um, so I wanted to practice daily art and get better at drawing and doing it digitally. Um, so I just tried to lay down uh, on the floor after sitting for way too long in my chair and uh, draw on my tablet. So I learned about how to use a tablet better and all these art tools and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I managed to keep going and keep trying things. I really wanted to attempt to just keep going um, with whatever I had. It was good enough um, each day. So I hit a few slow parts and kept going and it really helped me just um, keep producing things. And it was really relaxing in the evenings to do. So it was really nice to be a part of this. And I'm really glad that this community is here and um, 
it's been really great. So thank you. I did manage to sneak away after my quarter to the sea. So that was really nice. I got to try to draw the ocean um, for two days. So that was uh, really enjoyable. Rory Nichols is a white, queer, Seattle-based visual artist and birth worker. For Crush Repeat, they spent each day working on a series of reproductive justice-themed embroideries, which are now for sale. They hope to continue the project by releasing a booklet of embroidery designs for others to create. Sam Picone Loro is a 17-year-old self-taught artist who enjoys working with a fun, wide variety of mediums. This project was started by carving out the image on a rubber block, stamping it onto wood, and adding more details with paint little by little. The phrase Caraguaraguau, tiene su petire, means every hawk has its petire, kingbird, which comes from a story Sam heard in Puerto Rico. Samante Cruz is a queer, trans, Filipinx goldsmith and community organizer, grateful to be living on unceded uh, Sinaiax territory, also known as Nelson, BC. Are you here, Samante? I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, awesome, sorry. Um, so yeah, I created a body of work that explores my Filipino heritage, uh, examining the history of indigenous resistance in the Philippines by, by reimagining and creating sacred objects, amulets, and talismans of resilience. Uh, I created components which will ultimately be made into wearable jewelry by producing multiples of the same object um, by using Contrasting the ancient method of lost wax casting and uh, state of the art in 3D printing. I finished some of the objects uh, by teaching myself how to enamel, a uh, method of fusing glass to metal that dates back to the 13th century. The materials I used include copper, brass, fine silver, sterling silver, 18 karat gold plating shells, and acrylic paint. Um, most of the colorful pieces in the pictures are uh, my enameling sam samples, which will also be made into wearable jewelry. Some of the designs are based off the Katipunan uh, flags, which is a revolutionary society in the Philippines founded in 1892, um, whose primary goal was to gain um, independence from Spain through revolution. Uh, the septum rings I've designed um, have uh, designs that are inspired by tattoo motifs of centipedes and birds. Um, during 
colonization, much of our uh, sacred objects of gold and silver were stolen and melted down uh, to fund the Spanish conquest. Um, so what I consider um, in my capstone piece is the, the one that looks like it's dripping um, on the next slide. So it's a, it's a redesign of a symbol called the Ling Lingo, which is one of the only surviving amulets of the Philippines. It's meant to tell the story of our collective resilience that despite Spanish stealing and melting down our sacred objects and attempting to destroy our culture and traditions, we are still here. Um, the pendants and shells will be strung together, echoing the design of a rosary meant to represent the role that Catholicism played in our colonization. Um, so yeah, all my work is available for sale and just wanted to thank the team at uh, Crush Repeat for putting this on. It's been a really awesome experience. So thank you. Sarah Brickman is a queer Jewish writer and artist living in the Duwamish territory known as Seattle. They will share their work with us now live. Hi everyone. So um, I set up myself a very uh, ambitious project <laughs> uh, at the beginning of the month. I wanted to kind of explore hauntings and the things that my friends and I carry around with us that feel like ghosts. And I had a lot of big plans that I was going to um, do a lot of collaboration with my friends over the mail. And that quickly turned out to be more than I could chew. Um, and what I decided to do was um, to create some paper cuts and write some poems since I'm normally a writer. I wanted to do something a little bit more tactile um, because I'm so often spending time in my head. So I made um, some paper cuts of ghosts. This one is the quantum ghost. And this one is the rain ghost. Um, I wanted to show them to you all live this way because I like the way they move. I wanted them to sort of have that feeling of like moving in and out of the spaces uh, in our heads and the spaces that we're carrying around. And I just want to read you all um, the poem that goes with this ghost, the quantum ghost. Here's a universe layered like lace, complete with holes with delicate twists and sharp edges. Joyly universe matched up with what's underneath, so it all lines up perfectly. Is violence what everything rests on, or just what we see when we look through the gaps in the world? between every ounce of visible space, thousands of tons of dark matter. The ghosts singing, their choir making a noise we call letting go. Thank you so much to Crush Repeat for the space to make things this month. And thanks to everyone else who's shared, the art is blowing me away today. Sequoia Day O'Connell is a non-binary trans photographer, textile artist, curator, and full-spectrum doula. Sequoia's double exposure photographs often explore the spaces in between what we see in front of us, their work for Crush Repeat is a daily reflection on how we conceive of the natural and made world around us. They create new buildings, figures, and plants with their photographs to explore the multiple, multiplicity of realities that can and do exist in the eyes of each person. Sequoia's work is for sale. Sierra Severson explored a new medium for this project, a 
and has used it, used it to expand her collage art. Um, we didn't give T uh, Sierra a chance to speak. So let's do that now. Sierra, do you wanna go ahead and talk about your oh. video? Yes. Um, hi everyone. Um, so I really had no idea what I was gonna do um, for this project. So I kind of took advantage of recently moving into my own space and I just put up like a huge piece of paper next to my bed and I just decided to start writing something different every single day and um, it kind of led me to realize that what was missing from my art um, practice of just being a collage artist was music and movement and those were two things that were helping me get through um, March and just get through like the stage of um, quarantine. And so um, at the very end of March, I realized that stop motion could really put all of those things together. And um, yeah, so thank you for creating this space. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it's really awesome to be in such a supportive group of artists and to feel like I can put something out there that's not perfect <laughs> or that it is perfect in its imperfections um, since it's so new. So thank you everyone. Terry Newberg is a 75 year old creator from Bellingham, Washington who has been collecting natural and human-made sounds, as well as creating spontaneous melodies as she explored the voices in GarageBand on her MIDI keyboard. Her project idea was to create pieces that blended together various sound clips she'd recorded into a sound collage. The melody, is the, this piece, the melody in this piece was created almost a year ago when first entering lockdown. For this project, she took various sounds of people gathered together to surround the melody and added a photo that summed up what we've been missing.
That's what she said. 206 is an anonymous artist who likes to promote and amplify amazing women's thoughts, accomplishments, and awesome life's work. Her telephone pole art project was born out of a celebration for Women's Month 2020 amid a burgeoning global health pandemic and a desire to amplify the voices of thoughtful, brave, and bold women in a time that was scary and unknown. She completed 31 for Crush Repeat 2020, and since there is no shortage of amazing female heroines, she decided to continue the series in 2021. That's what she said, 206, chooses to remain anonymous because she wants the spotlight to be on these ladies and not on herself and being super stealthy as an artist is kind of a thrill and is par for the course for a lot of street artists. Her work can be seen around South Seattle with many con concentrated in Columbia City. Wendy Elisheva Summerson is a queer, disabled, cat-loving Jewish artist, writer, and healer. Hey, everyone. So excited to be the last one up again. Um, I decided to do um, a lino cut bird every day, and I did... Um, Last year I had painted these wax birds and I'm trying to learn lino cut and like so many folks, I'm trying to be less of a perfectionist. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to try to do a lino cut bird and keep it to like an hour a day. Um, and it was really fun. I love birds. It was a challenge to show in black and white what I'm used to showing in color and I was just thinking about trying to really get the details. And um, serendipitously, I'm reading that book, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. And she's talking about kind of like, how do we get our attention back from corporations? And they're trying to steal our energy and make us market ourselves. And we get agitated and distracted and we can't focus. And that one of the ways to counter that is to put our attention somewhere else and to really develop a skill of observing. And so I love the idea of doing that with birds and how like no two birds are anything alike, really. They're just like so wildly different. So it's really fun to just pay attention to the details of what makes each bird so different. And I tried to group them. I think this one is like loosely um, songbirds and woodpeckers. And then I did um, a bunch of raptors and owls. And then I did birds who um, are mostly by the water. So it was really fun and um, grateful to be a part of this amazing project for, I don't know how many years I've been a part of it. Um, so thank you to all the organizers 
and all the participants. I love seeing everyone's art. And um, that's it. All right. That brings us to the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us for Crush Repeat 2021. This show is everything that it is because of the amazing community that supports it. And we are so grateful. Honestly, my heart is just exploding right now. So thank you all. That was so beautiful. Sarah, would you like to say some words? Yeah, just another huge thank you to everyone who made art and shared it tonight. You crushed it. <laughs> um, uh, it was all so good. Um, it was wonderful to just be able to take it in because we've been doing all the that behind the scenes, um, putting everything into slideshows and on the website and everything. It was wonderful just to watch and listen. And um, I'm just having a real moment for all the beauty that was created. Um, and we really appreciate everyone who showed up to watch on the warmest day of the year so far in Seattle. <laughs> Serious. Could have been, Thank Could have been sunbathing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you are interested, if you're watching and you're interested in participating next year, you can join our mailing list um, from our website. Right, McKenna? Can they join? Them? Yeah. Everything you could need to know about us is on our website. Or um, follow us on Instagram, um, which you can find how to do that on the website. Mm -hmm. Crushrepeat.com. Super easy. We'll uh, keep you posted about everything and have a fantastic night. That concludes our show. And one last thing for everyone to see the full, the full everybody's art that'll be going up shortly. So the link for our website will be in the, in the YouTube comments. And then if you want to see everyone's full project, that will be up forevermore. Just give us a few minutes to make it live. And then if you want to share, um, with anybody who wasn't able to watch this live show tonight, it has been recorded and you can look up the Crush Repeat YouTube channel and it will be there. And it'll also be on the web gallery. Awesome. Yay. All right, thank you so much, everybody.